Hi, this is Dr. Kendra Pearsall, and what I'm here for in Maui is partly to do some research. Dr. Weston Price did some research all over the world where he found out that um, people who ate native diets, native primitive diets, were in very good health, but when these people would go into modern societies and start eating the modern civilized diet with sugar and processed food, uh, the, the health differences were amazing. The, the sickness rates were which much higher, et cetera. And we see this all over the world. Now, here in Maui, what we're looking at is that, Mau is that Hawaii is the number two fattest state in the United States. Number two. It's number one for children and adolescents. And so what I thought I would do is ask one of our native Hawaiians, uh, about more about the culture and, and about what she thinks is going on that's behind this, this obesity epidemic that's occurring in Hawaii. So here we have Kaolani LaRose. And Kaolani, tell me what are your thoughts on why Hawaii has such, a, such an obesity epidemic when we didn't see that before in the ancient culture. Why are we seeing this now? What do you think is happening? I think nowadays it's um, we have so many, so much things in our lives that it makes it so much easier to go to a fast food restaurant or to pick something up really quick, not even thinking about nutrition for our, ourselves or for our ohana. And like you said well, earlier when we mentioned that Hawaii, it is expensive to live here and we do carry two jobs to, you know, just to, re you know, reside here that at the end of your day, um, a single mom with a family, it's so hard to go home and cook a home-cooked meal, a nutritious cooked meal. It's just easier to spend by McDonald's or Taco Bell, which is right around the corner, and pick up dinner for, you know, her ohana at that night. Um, I do know back in the ancient Hawaiian times, um, I was doing some research, or was some reading, um, and, and I mentioned to you before that being voluptuous or being um, large actually meant to be, you know, to show you the wealth. Yes. You know, our kings and queens were quite large. Yes. Also, our, um, the Native Hawaiians did a lot of physical work back in the days. They would go up into the mountains to cut down the trees, to build the canoes. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we're just working all the time, being that, you know, it's just so expensive. So I think the lack of exercise... Is the work now is the work nowadays more sedentary? Would you say versus the hard labor, maybe back? I would say so. Yeah, okay. it would. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And just because we're working so much, and then we don't have enough time to exercise, mm -hmm. and just the convenience of fast food just makes it easier. So tell me about the native Hawaiian diet. What did they eat back then? A lot. They did um, a lot of fruits, vegetables. They did a lot of fish. Um, not too many meat items like pig. Um, that was more for our kings and queens, oh. but for the natives, um, they would just eat a lot of taro. Did you fruit. eat the fish raw? They would. Yeah. They would eat the fish raw, okay. um, and also they would cook it as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And what else did you eat? Um, again, coconut, papayas, a, a lot of fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables, taro, mm -hmm. um, but not too much meat, just pretty much fish, mm -hmm. taco, and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. So you said that it was in vogue, I guess, back in the ancient Hawaiian times, to be overweight because that was a sign of wealth. Now, was it just the rich people who were overweight and the rest of the population was lean? Yes, it yes. was. Our okay. kings and queens were very much large. Um, the Hawaiian, you know, Queen, queen Ka'ahomanu, she was very large. <laughs> um, king Kamehameha was more on the um, thicker side. But then our elites, you know, they still had to be fit and strong to go ahead and fight. But um, uh. The women and so forth. The upper, the upper class was very was large. And has that changed? Is it still seen as a status symbol today to be large? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> it just it just kind of shows um, how life changes. And you look back, it's very easy to go ahead and just forget about yourself and to make what works within your day. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you do to stay fit and trim in Hawaii? 
<laughs> what are you doing differently than everyone else? I run a lot. You run a lot. <laughs> okay. In the morning, wake up, you know, get some exercise, get the metabolism mm-hmm. running high, mm-hmm. being a little bit more conscious about what I eat. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's what we lack a lot, too. You're not Is quite sure, right? you know, the process of what actually goes in our body. Right. Um, even though we're not eating a large amount, mm-hmm. small portions of fried food, a lot of mm-hmm. salt, it does play a lot. Um, so I think the knowledge as well plays in effect. In effect. What about the children? Why are the children so overweight here? What are you? What have you observed? Are they Our exercising? children, not as much. Okay. Um, they do get active, but I believe it's just more the convenience of the parents. Unfortunately, the food. It comes um, down to the food. nowadays a lot of the toys. If you look at the at Walmart, you have all these. Game Boys, PlayStation, stuff to kind of keep you occupied at home, not too much to keep you occupied outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you want to say any kind of Hawaiian words or leave our readers with any, any kind of conclusion? Um, not that I can think of it <laughs> mind and being put on spot, but if you wanted to learn a little bit more about um, our culture or anything like that, there's a great book out there, Nana I- Ike Kumu. Um, it's a really great book, and it says a lot about of our, our culture, and um, it talks a little bit more about the eating habits or the feasting that the Hawaiians did. Well, why don't you touch on that? I just, I'm currently still reading the unit, <laughs> of the book, but and you did um, that to me, and that's it is a great book. It Tell talks about, about the feast and famine. Well, there's different types of feasting. They feast on all occasions. They have um, feasts for you no know, arrivals, birthdays. They also feast during the death, um, during death. Oh. Um, it is more, it touches more on um, pretty much celebrating the life that they shared, not so much mourning the life. Yeah. And um, the different foods that are eaten what during this the time. The fasting they did, um, certain fasting, if you were to, if you were ill ah. in, in my family, I would fast for you, saying that I'm going to really? take myself and, you know, pray to the gods and, you know, and pray for your health oh, as well. Okay. So they did that um, what other times for a couple fast? of times. They would do fasting for um, praise of just God. Interesting. And, you know, just wanting more um, for their land and their people. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Now, do, does anyone in Hawaii still worship the ancient gods, or what is the main kind of faith in Hawaii now? There are many faiths here in Hawaii. Um, if you go to certain islands, they probably will. The culture is probably a lot more stronger. The belief. Mm-hmm. Niihau is a very yeah. um, strong Hawaiian. Um, slash, they have a little bit more Tahitian cultures there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Big Island still carries a lot of their culture. They're trying to preserve it's the best island to go to to feel mm. the culture um, at, at, the, at its strongest. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Aloha. Thank you. <laughs>